Good afternoon, people. How have you guys been doing? Let's give a couple of you guys a few minutes to, to roll off roll off up in here and we go from there. I, I got a treat for you guys and I want all you guys to be a part of what I'm doing here. This is um, going to be great. And um, let's 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 bring you guys into play. I, I want to try something different. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna have some of you guys submit questions, and I'm gonna let you guys help produce this show. That's what I'm gonna do. And I have an interview coming up with Lorenzo Gilliard, the Missouri. I mean, the Kansas City Strangler. How you doing, Jan B? Oh, Jim B, I know you're going to want to be a part of this one, Jim B, because you are a true crime fanatic. So, Jim B, listen, this is what I'm this is what I'm going to do. Listen. I got an interview coming up next week on the holiday. I'm going to do this on the holiday. I am interviewing Lorenzo Gilliard. Lorenzo Gilliard was known as the Missouri, no, the Kansas City Strangler. And I think it was 13 women. Now, as I'm talking to Mr. Gilliard, right? Mr. Gilliard, it, it, it's, it's how can I say it? Because you guys are not reading the transcripts and you guys are not reading the evidence that I have, right? So Lorenzo Gilliard is... Char was charged for killing 18 women. 18 women in, in Missouri. The Kansas City Strangler. This is what they called him. So I want you to go read up on him. Read up on him. And I want you to get the email out of the description of on um the of, over on Real World Podcast. And I want you to email me. I'm gonna let everybody ask two questions that they want to know about Mr. Gilliard. Two questions about this case. So I want to bring you guys in. And, and as I do this, I'm going to announce the person's name. If, if That's only if the person wants their name announced who asked the question. And, we, you know, this is my way of giving back to you guys and bringing you guys in and letting you guys be a part of what's going on in real world podcast and i salute you guys and thank you guys for being with me you know what i'm saying and, and sticking with me yeah uh little miss shut the f up yeah over here we can cuss little miss shut the fuck up i guess that's what that means um yes eight, i think it's 18 women it's, it's 18 hey what up pucks he's and not listen y'all and some of the evidence that he sent me, right, and some of the evidence that I got, they threw a lot of the evidence out on him and said he shouldn't have, they, the police didn't have a reason or cause to, uh, yeah, he's the, yes, Jim B, how did you know that? How did you know that? Damn, Jim, you be on your shit. How did you know that, Jim? <laughs> Yes, he worked for the. He was a. Uh, he was the the supervisor at the sanitation um, building. Yeah, that's that's uh, yeah at the sanitation yard, and they believe that it was more women that he buried there. Oh, look at you. Okay, you're right, Jim. You okay? You from the area? Damn, Jim. Just let me ask you a question, Jim. Just off of what you know. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty or not guilty, Jen? It's up to you. Tell me, tell me, Jen. Just give me your honest opinion. Your honest opinion. Guilty? Now, nah, Jen, I'm going to say I think he's guilty too, Jen. <laughs> I think he's guilty than a motherfucker, but, but he's proclaiming his innocence, Jim. He's claiming that he didn't do it. 
He's claiming that um, they set him up, claiming he shouldn't be there. Oh, my gosh. Um, this is what I'm going to do, right? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I want, because I want, I'm going to set up my membership today, right? And I'm not, we haven't started doing the interview yet, right? But I'm going to release the phone calls that he and I have. And, and I'm going to let you guys hear all the inmates that I talk to. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to release all of their, me and their phone conversations to let you guys hear the phone, just the actual conversations of when we first started talking to one another and, and, you know, we break in the ice. I want you guys to hear the conversations. I got conversations with um, Debbie Brown. For those of you who don't know who Debbie Brown is, Debbie Brown was the girlfriend of Alton Coleman. This is a case from the 80s where Alton Coleman went on a, they called them a serial killer couple when they went on a statewide killing spree from, I want to say, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and, and all that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got me and her phone conversations. Um... Um, Linda, um, Linda Lewis, the woman out of Ohio who's serving life in prison for letting her boyfriend rape her, her kids, her grandchildren and starving her grandchildren. But it's a twist in that shit, ladies and gentlemen, a twist, um, I'll let you hear our phone conversations. Um, the conversations that I had with Miss Tiffany Powell, I will let you hear those. I know a lot of you know who Tiffany Powell is. If you don't, you better do your homework, get your get your get your get your education up. And um, the conversation. Oh my God, I have a, a young lady, um, Sierra Harp. Sierra Harp, ladies and gentlemen, she's the young lady who stabbed the father of her child, stabbed him in front of the child, and then shot him six times. And she did all this and recorded it while she was on Facebook Live or something like that. I know it was she recorded it live, and they used that tape, that, that, that video, to help convict her. Now, this is, this is, these are cases... In interviews, I got all these people to commit to give me an interview. All of them to commit. Um, they know the monies that they're going to receive, and I, I, I'm, I'm taking care of that. So, one by one, I'm going down. I'm knocking all these interviews out. And um, oh, I forgot to mention Terry Blair, GMB. I know you know who Terry B. Um, Terry Blair is. I know you know who he is. His interview is coming soon, real soon. It's coming out. We record his interview as we speak. Uh, who was who was dedicated? Who was dedicated? <laughs> yeah, on his that that goddamn Jen, you know all this shit, Jen B. What the fuck? What qu what question you have, um, little Miss? Shut the fuck up. What questions you have? Listen, y'all. I I I just got so many interviews coming, and, and I'm doing right now. So um, wow, this, this this is so beautiful. Um, okay, uh, yeah, that that's Miss Sierra Hart. Sierra Hart is the young lady who um did what she did to her um. Her, her kid's father stabbed him and shot him and recorded it. Yes. Um, you know, she she talks very open. Okay. She talks very openly and candid about this crime as if she, I did it. Whatever. She's not a. None of them are, the ones that I speak to, none of them hides anything. They come straight out and tell you what they did, how they did it, and it is what it is. Now, but well, hold on, Mr. Gilliard, Lorenzo Gilliard, 
He's proclaiming his fucking innocence, ladies and gentlemen. And I read the people who did the DNA test that when they ran his DNA through the system, it started going off like a pinball machine. What's up? I need a back rub. How you guys doing? You great? Great, great. See, see, let me let me tell all my people something, right? This is the mutual side over here. You know what I'm saying? Mutual, meaning, hey, we we in the middle right here. You know, we 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 don't pick sides over here. We we're mutual. Whoever you you clicked up with, camped up with, that's your business. We don't we don't give a fuck about none of that. We don't give a fuck about all that. When you hear and you on real world podcasts or hit them up. We we all is one. We we all is one. You can you can be um, somebody else's ma. I don't give a fuck. You can be somebody else's best friend. I don't give a fuck. That has nothing to do with me. Like I say, we're mutual over here. I'm 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 a one man band, one man show. So here, check all that at the front door, and and, and, and no beef over here. Everybody over here, we we coming over here. This is the education session over here, and you you get educated on an inmate telling his or her story. So over here, we we ain't on all that drama and that that beef shit. You feel me? All is good. Oh, I love you back. Uh, I, I need a back rub. You you've been here for a good minute. I, I know you. I know who you are. Yes. Um, how am I doing firsthand of, the, of um, the things that happened from the ones that did it? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all the story, right? Um, I um, When I did the Samuel Little interview, right, he and I, we talked privately on the phone for a week before we start recording right and um as he was telling me these things i was furious i was heated because i'm a father and i'm a father that has daughters and i have a, a granddaughter and i was looking like wow as you're telling me this and, and i'm interviewing you you're asking these questions I had to put my feelings to the side and get through the job and be unbiased because you can't put your feelings or your emotions into something when you're doing a job. And, and this is what we're doing. Is, you know, I'm, my job is to get you this content, right? So I can't say you a piece of shit or a piece of scum and this and that, right? Because the interview would have been over. So I, I I I bit the bullet and I I I, I inter interacted with him and laughed with him and called him a cold motherfucker and all that, you know. But it was it was scary. It, it, it was real scary because my heart went out for the two the 82 women, even the two transgenders that he killed. So the 84 people that he killed, my heart went out to them. And I was pissed off at the police, the um, Miami police and um, the Alabama police. I was very disappointed with both both police organizations because first, back in the 70s, if Alabama police would have did their job, Samuel Little would have been off the streets back in the 70s and would have been in jail because he had just only killed one person. So 83 families would have been would, would, would have been not been grieving, and 83 people would have still been here living. But by Alabama police not doing their job, we got 84 deaths. You know, so that was kind of hard for me to uh, really sit there and do his interview. Um yeah, I need the back rub. It is a lot of with a lot of people for him, only one guy to kill, but he did this over 50 years. You got to understand this. Um, he traveled state to state doing this. Um, when I 
I did Michelle Johnson's interview, right? My mind was, okay, she's guilty as fuck. She's guilty as sin. And when I started reading the discovery packet and everything, then I was like, wow, that, that went out the window, right? And then when I started hearing her truth, it went out the window a little bit more farther, right? So it was just like I felt I felt sorry for her. I felt sorry for her because what she went through was sad. And as a um as as a, as a like I said, as a father, as a man, as a father, as a grandfather, um it hurt me that there was no man in her life to help her. There was no man that she could have went went to for help. There was no man that was there, a uncle, a father, a brother, a cousin or something, a grandfather to even step up to protect her because she's been this way at 13 years old. You know what I'm saying? She's been, it's been 13 years old. So I, I felt I felt bad for her, real I really did. So hey, how you doing, prayer for peace? How you doing? Um it's um these interviews, um, they can't weigh heavy on you, but um you gotta, you know, you just gotta learn how to separate you know, that work from reality. You, you feel what I'm saying? So with that being said, I, I separate all of that while I'm doing the interviews. And that's and I let them be comfortable. They get comfortable with me. I have to get them comfortable with me because as a person that served time, inmates can be so guarded. They can be so bottled up everything is bottled up because they you know they think people is out to get them they think people's out to hurt them but as coming from where they are now because I've, I've been once where they are i have to go in here and like hey look when i when i talk to them and they call me right i just say hey you know let me introduce myself and you know i break it down tell them what i'm trying to do um how much i'm willing to pay them and um, I tell them I'm gonna give you fifty dollars up front before we start, and I'm gonna give you the other fifty right before we finish. So you know all will be good. And um, I tell them, don't say yes now, and don't say no now. Just think about it, and call me back later. Even if you got questions and ain't ready to to say yes or no, call me. We can talk. I keep money on my phone, and I tell them even if you say no. Still call me. We we can chop it up. And the reason for that, I tell them if they stay, say no, still call me, we can chop it up, is because that means I got to work a little harder to get to gain their trust and chop it up with them. You know what I'm saying? And, and as you do that, you, 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 you're wearing them down. You know, when you talk about old jail stories with them, or, or you know, what this means in jail, what that means in jail, you know what I'm saying, in prison. They're like, okay, he, he really was here. Cause they, they will ask you, well, you know, what was this? You know, what part was this? You know, I think I was here. This is where I was at. So you have to be real with them. And that's that. Uh, you know what? Um, you're so right, GMB. You are. So, um, let me say this, y'all. I just want to, to come in and chop it up with you guys. And uh, listen, y'all, I want y'all to help me spread the word on Real World, Real World Podcast, y'all. We got to get Real World Podcast out here. It's going to take off. It's going to grow. But we need to start letting, I want y'all to let y'all friends know, your neighbors know, your girlfriends know, whoever. Let them know about Real World Podcast. And let them see the interviews. Like right now, I'm finna re-release -re the interview tonight, and um, I got three more parts of, of Michelle's interview, and I'm gonna drop it. Um, 
I, I just want to give you guys a, a break on Michelle because I think a lot of you guys is getting tired of Michelle's interview. But um, she got three more three more parts to go, and and it's the end of her interview, and then we can move on to something something else, and I can start dropping another interview. Um, but we gotta um, get this get the fire going up on the Real World Podcast because I'm giving you guys great content. I'm giving you beautiful content. I'm not giving you no bullshit. I'm giving you straight hardcore facts that you're hearing from the people. And um, drop the link. Um, I will drop the link to the show. Um, a little uh, miss shut the a little miss shut the fuck up. <laughs> but um, somebody in here drop the link to Real World Podcast for me, please. Somebody drop that link. Kim is not around. Kim usually um um. Kim usually hates, uh, I mean, Kim usually drops the links. You know what, JMB, just for you, I'm going to do it. Somebody asked me, and let me explain it to you guys, why I drop them and make them short, not long. Uh, Tony C can drop the link, too. Yeah, Tony C and Kim always drop the link. I made the interview short. The way I make them short is because... A lot of people have short attention span. And when you got a short attention span, I don't want nobody to scan through and miss something. You know what I'm saying? Because when you scan through stuff, you miss it. So um, that's why I make the interview short like that. Five, I mean, 10 minutes long and stuff like that. There's There go the link right there. Thank you, Tony C. Thank you. The link is there. Tony C posted it. Just click on it. Make sure you guys go subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. If you haven't watched any of the, the interviews, please click on the Samuel Little interview and then pl um, go through the um, the uh, Michelle Johnson interview and, and binge watch it. Just binge watch it and, and, and see how, how hard this young lady had it from 13 years old to start smoking crack at 16 all the way down to the, the last part that I dropped of her watching the dude go retrieve her daughter's head out of the garbage dumpster and watch him take the head in a garbage bag, walk it down the street and then throw it. Man, that was, that was heartbreaking within itself. It was heartbreaking. It was real heartbreaking. But y'all, I got a roll right now. I just want to come in and, and talk to you and Jim B. What I'm going to, for Jim B, what I'm going to do for y'all, I'm going to drop uh, I'm going to drop one of the episodes today. And then I'm going to drop the last two tomorrow. And that'll be the full interview with with um Michelle Johnson, y'all. And um, it, it, it's crazy. But y'all, hey, y'all heard, y'all heard the last part of that interview. It was not, it was, it was wild. That was messed up. And I honestly believe that Michelle is going to need some counseling for the rest of her life after this. I honestly believe that. But thank you guys very much. I love you guys. I got to roll. Peace and love, y'all. I am out of here.